How does Hi, that I... feel? Mm. Are you going to let me introduce? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> this is perfect. Calm this down. Perfect. <laughs> Calm down. You can do this on your show. This is my show now. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, no. To to our, our fantastic viewers, we are several, several glasses of wine into this point. Um, but welcome to the second episode of Trekker's Delight, Star Trek FTP. Um, we are going to be covering Angel One. And obviously we have the lovely Robin Alyssa and the fantastic William Wofford. And I am your host, Marie Brownhill. And I guess we need to take it away. Who wants to do this episode summary? I think Robin is our summary queen at this point. I'm the summary queen? Oh, Lord. This means we're going to have to make you a tiara. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely the princess of the group. Like, we've established that. I'm just going to keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Angel one. <clears throat> so we open up. Um, the Enterprise arrives at the planet of Angel one. Um, <clears throat> the Enterprise is looking for the survivors of the freighter Odin. Um, <clears throat> it's been, they notice that it's been missing three escape pods and only one is in the proximity of Angel One. Um, Riker, Data, Tasha Yar, um, and Troy um, go to the surface and try to negotiate with the elected one. Um, <clears throat> who are native inhabitants of the planet and um, out to ask them in order to search for the uh, survivors. Um, <clears throat> on the ship, and I'm, o I'm only doing this now because it really doesn't matter to the episode, on the ship we get a secondary storyline where Crusher has to find the cure to a virus as she does. No, no, it matters to the resolution because they had to have a reason that everybody couldn't get beamed to the Enterprise and warped away. Right. Yeah, let's, let's create a whole virus from from Worf getting snow thrown on him from a holodeck where it's supposed to disappear after it leaves the holodeck. Yeah, that was that was terrible. And it's not even Worf, right? Like, I mean, it's literally the first time I think Picard ends up wearing something. Like, <laughs> Captain Gomez, or the future Captain Gomez eventually does it. But, like, it, it lands all over Captain Picard. It's really awkward. Especially since this is season one. So, like, everybody's still wearing the unitards. <laughs> oh, yeah, the space suits. Yeah. Let's not hate on the unitards yet. <laughs> Um, so it's always time, Angel always time to hate on the unitards. Always. I just I like look at Riker, but in that unitard, I ain't lie to you. It gives it, it's just it's so tight and it's so ground and it's just nice and just make ah, you know, just like. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, this has gone south, and it's only five <laughs> minutes in, and we, we are <laughs> all from the south. This is. Like I mean, I did warn everybody that we were several glasses in by this point, so. <laughs> I have had like ginger ale. I'm sober. Uh, I have had ginger ale. <laughs> so wait, so wait. I'm several glasses of wine in, and I'm the calm one. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> These summaries are too much pressure. <laughs> we can't even get through the summary. <laughs> so. In the away team's negotiations on the planet to find the survivors, we learned that the four male survivors of the <clears throat> of the crashed um, freighter um, have been declared fugitives because this society on Angel One is ruled by a matriarchal council. Uh, the council, matriarchal council, council. Yeah, matriarchal. <laughs> I, I really need to know what a pencil is, honestly, because I'm a little I'm a little unclear on that point, Rob. <laughs> it's a little tiny pair of pants, like the men on this planet wear. <laughs> and they are rocking. The men on this planet. planet the, I was gonna say the men on this planet wear pants. 
I mean, they do. You know that little wrap that Riker has? Except I can see I mean, they do. They do. They they are pants. Oh, there. There we are. Right there. And can we talk about the fact that that poor man has to wear, like, what is that? Burgundy? Like, magenta? Like, that? there's a whole conversation to be had about that. And it's not just the mullet, either. I yeah, thought this was a... I, to... If this was just man, I thought it would Move. Been a, a Move. Gay Thank you, Jermaine. Thank you. If it was just man, I thought it would have been a gay planner from the 80s. <laughs> I'd have loved to be <laughs> that. I don't give it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a, I, yeah, so so yeah. so what you're saying is is the next show you're gonna be rocking that outfit like we're gonna see like your half your man nip like that's what's hey, gonna be on. Fi- I, 53, pound, that, 53 pounds down, 60 to go, baby. I will rock the shit out of that outfit and I'll show my ass out. I'll drink to that. Free, free the nips. I like it. I will pay for it. Now, Where was I? I? Like- no, 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 no. This is this is our Patreon incentive, guys. That that's what that is. I yep. will wear that. I swear to God, I will wear that. Like, I will <laughs> stitch that for you. I will stitch I that for you do. again. I Patreon incentive. Like, but anyway, like, honestly, we need to do some track drag. Okay, we need to. Like, seriously. Hey, man. Right, right. Why? Like, I mean, seriously, somebody needs to do walks on a Troy drag, and the fact that that I'm hasn't happened why, breaks my heart. Like, what? What? Walks on a Troy is like the ultimate golden girl. Like, why is there no one doing her drag yet? Like, why would you? Okay, so like, I know there's a there there is a queen who is doing like terrible Deanna Troy jumpsuits. Like, why would you not just embrace the looks on a crazy and like go for it? Well, why is there a queen doing jumpsuits when you have locks on? Mm. Mm. So many conversations to have. So many. We literally. So many, but we this gotta is get through the summary. We, yeah, gotta we gotta finish the summary. the summary. We are eight minutes in. This is, you know, okay. <laughs> I don't even remember where I left off. By the way, this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually like a sample of what Drunk Trek would look like. So if you like this, then you you really, oh. you really need to put a ring on it <laughs> and let us know. Um, okay. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, the survivors were marked as fugitives. The society is ruled by a... A uh, ruling council consisting of women and the, as you can kind of, as we've been kind of alluding to, the twist of this episode is that this society is like mid 20th century Earth society with the gender roles reversed. On this, and Picard explains it in the episode on Angel One, women evolved to be the big, strong, you know, dominant gender on the planet, and men evolved to be serious let's unpack that guys let's 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 unpack that one because let's talk let's talk about the fact that they are considered fugitives and outlaws because they are and i quote trying to subvert the natural order of things yes. is it wrong that i couldn't stop staring at the men's asses <laughs> yes <laughs> i mean there is, ter- there is a term for that and it's not a nice Yeah, I, like, I mean, I'm not sure where you're going, booty. Robin, so I'm just going to sit back and like let that play out. Okay. Normally, just... normally they have a flat butt in Trek, but this time they had booty. Like, they had butt. Well, so a number of them are actually dancers, and that has a lot to do with it. Thank you! See, I knew the there was something, because I'm like, okay. hold on, hold on. I mean, on let's, also be, let's also be thing. real. Like, the, I mean, the way they had those, like, the, you know, the the random ties around their thighs, I'm just like, that was a design choice. And then not only do we have the ties around our thighs, okay, I know you got that crotch shot. I know you got it, so I'm going to need you to pull it up right now. Because not only do we have that, we have, like, the ties there we go. There it is. That's a dance belt. That's definitely a dance belt. Boom. Well, it will. That's, like a, that's a dance belt, belt and some additional and a harness. Piece that looks like a harness. Is what that too. is. It's like a harness, you know, almost. Because that, my friends, that is that is some additional padding just in case. All I gotta say is the only thing that I was here for, um, was Deanna and um. Tasha's reaction to the whole thing. Right there, right? Like, that smug sort of, like, what? Like, because... because. Na- Honey, that's I'll not admit, smug. That's a, oh, I know what I got last night. 
That is not an I know what I got Dallas Diet. That is a I'm pretty sure I, you have and I, wear, I have been wearing I have been wearing penis hair that. for this entire he, season and finally you get a cod piece. That's what that is. Like we have established in this episode that Riker is definitely um the TNG's Kirk. I know, right? Like because yeah. what what makes me angriest about this episode, and this is this is clearly jumping ahead. <laughs> I'm not even bearing just, the lead. I'm gonna I, jump ahead. Like it it drives me nuts because like the whole crux of this of this episode is that like you know the elected one wants to like wants the the Enterprise crew to take these these terrible men away because they're acting like you know equality is an acceptance is, is is a normal way of being and how dare they and when the enterprise is like well we can't actually do that they're like all right fine we're gonna disintegrate them um except that you know after this whole interlude where in beata like um space karen extraordinaire um <laughs> go, like, <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. Yeah, I mean, she was uh, ahead of her time. She d she's not quite rocking what we think of as the I want to talk to your manager haircut yet, but that's only because it wasn't a thing in this, in this decade. Um, but anyway, like, I mean, basically, she's like, we're going to kill them by disintegration. And then Riker, who, by the way, has romanced her with the power of his magic Riker penis, has been like, it stands up and says, but wait! This is not the way things are done! And he doesn't actually make a real solid argument. He just kind of throws out some word salad and she's like, we're going to have to think about your comments on evolution. And then toddles off. And that's the resolution of the episode, guys. Like, I mean, she and the council go back and they're like, well, Riker, the big, strong white man, has now told us Ooh, that's where we're going. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that was the we're thing. We're bringing it back to here. I mean, yeah, we're bringing it back, aren't we? We are. I mean, because it's right. because they're interrelated, right? Like, I mean, there's there's this whole this whole conversation to be had about apartheid that Robin's going to take in a second. But like, I want to finish mm -hmm. this, this thought, which is roughly that like Riker has this 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 big sort of like cis head like white dude i'm gonna tell you how you're supposed to be and beata's like okay so let's go back and do that and then we come forward and we come up with a way not to execute these people and i'm just sitting here like literally none of this makes sense none of this like politically beata has nothing to gain here at all by letting them live she has everything to lose By letting them live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, remember, like, there's a whole like Ramsey somehow from his random ass cave in the middle of nowhere. Ramsey has started an entire political movement that says the men's in need the equal rights. Oh my God, I know, I know. And so, like, Riker's whole argument is is that you can't execute Ramsey because that turns him into a martyr. And Beata's like, well, that's valid. So I'm going to maroon him on a random continent because I have spares of those. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're going to do. You just leveled him down from Jesus to Moses. <laughs> right? Right? And also, like, all of them are rocking bad MacGyver mullets. And I have so much trouble taking that seriously. Yeah, I don't know what in the late 80s, what was the why was that the style for white men? Like, someone explain to me why we go to the MacGyver mullet. Like, it is not attractive, it is just not. I don't know, anyway. I don't and, know. And then we turn like we flash forward several thousand years and or several hundred years, and we end up with Gray's mullet. And I'm also not sure about that one. Hmm. Jermaine. Jermaine. <laughs> really? Really? Because that guy is milk toast. So what Jermaine is it was, so what Jermaine okay. is letting okay, us know buddy. is that he would pull it and we're like, no, 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 let us save you from yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Anyway, so apartheid. <laughs> We are not 15 minutes in, and y'all, I'm sorry. Like, y'all can talk about Mullins all you want to. The way I see it, like, we cannot sit here and act like that we ain't done some stupid shit over getting some of that good good, okay? <laughs> we cannot sit here and act like we did not do no dumb shit. Like, I have never time- said, I have never, ever in my life said that I did not do dumb stuff. Did those yeah. words come out of my mouth? I, I am literally say- like, I mean, oh, 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 okay, guys, I swear, we had a really solid conversation about where we wanted this to go, and all of that is just like, whoosh, this is the like window. the after conversation of that conversation. <laughs> We should have just filmed our prior conversation. I it was, I you know what? It was the perfect talk, episode. No, let's talk about what really happened. Let's talk about what really happened. I didn't right. get the show. I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. I watched it for the second or third time in my life. First time as a teenager, second time in college, third time now. And all three of those times, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Like anything. I did not from the perspective, oh, it wasn't that bad. No, as in, I didn't really see anything wrong with it. Because I could tell that they were trying, what they were trying to do, and failed miserably at, now that I know, um, what they were trying to do was speak up for the misogyny and the sexism and X, Y, and Z that was going on and still going on today. Now, I get the intent but where they missed the mark was we have two men straight white men mind you presumably who wrote directed and produced this and there was not a woman at the table therefore they they were speaking for women over a historical situation that they have greatly taken out of context yeah i mean and that's where they went wrong so that's the entire problem with episodes like these in general. I, in a lot of different shows, we have kind of episodes that follow their same format where they're commenting on very topical issues for the time, but then they try I mean, to- To be mask. fair, this is a topical yeah. issue even now. Like, I mean, this hasn't even now. this hasn't gone anywhere, right? Like, yeah. Well, no, because I'm referring to the apartheid because part of what the production notes were about this were about apartheid situation in it yeah let's that. let's flesh that out a little robin yeah because oh, okay. some people will not if i didn't know it i know they don't know it <laughs> so the reason why i said this is connected to the apartheid situation commenting on that situation because during that time during the late 80s early 90s in south africa we where after nelson mandela is freed from prison we have this entire social change in south africa right where we have black people black south africans gaining more rights and slowly 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 taking political power away from the white from the right minority in south africa so part of at the time the rationalization that these people would come up with at the time were that oh well if we did it to them what's stopping them from doing it to us And that's where this episode falls apart because it takes that basic premise, right? It says, well, if men are patriarchal and treat women like crap, you know, in our society, what's to stop women from treating men like that if they rule the society? It's taking that premise and doing the same thing. But then we have Riker and his magic penis coming to which I would have it's, gladly taken. I am literally going to need I would have it taken like it for a t-shirt her. that says Riker and his her. magic penis. I would have um, taken it for her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all right, all right. Finish, finish your thought, Robin. <laughs> so that so that's what infuriates me about this episode because it's it's trying to co- it's trying to comment on a sexism. It's doing too much. It's trying to comment on a sexism issue. It's trying to comment on apartheid. It's trying to be topical. It's trying to actually have something to say about each of these issues. But because the writers, um, the two writers, have no personal connection to these issues, they're not victims of apartheid South Africa. They're men, so they are a 
product of the patriarchal patriarchal system that we live in, that we live in today. They have no connection to that, and no. And I hate to say it, they have no. How they do don't you get say it. it? Yeah, they have no. I'm, I think I, I think the real problem is is that the way they choose to re- to end the episode, the resolution that they craft is to have Riker, mm-hmm. who is basically the stand-in for you know whites his head masculinity um be the source of the resolution right um so if you're if you're in a situation where if if your whole episode is basically trying to trying to explore questions of who has power and how that power manifests to vest that power ultimately in the representation of the power majority mm-hmm. undercuts everything that you that you're trying to say exactly right? um because that's that's who Riker is i mean he has mm-hmm. yes he does this perform and this is also kind of <laughs> bothersome by the way um then he has this performative moment where he puts on the indigenous garb which is a whole conversation that we should possibly have about how vaguely inappropriate that is. Okay. Not even vaguely, y'all. It's inappropriate. So y'all y'all got me on the episode as a whole. Y'all even got me on what he did in the end. But y'all still ain't convinced me about what he wore yet. Like y'all I'm still I'm still so while we're here, while we're here, I need y'all to explain to me what was wrong with that. Because if he, I'm gonna need chest, you to flash. I'm gonna need you to flash the cod piece, and then really, that's that's. Please, the we just need to bask in this for like two minutes, <laughs> and just like this should be the 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 thumbnail. And and also, I kind yeah. of want to have a cold conversation just from like a garment construction constructive perce- construction mm-hmm. perspective. Like, why do we have gathers on the sides of these pants? Like, I don't understand what they were going for here. Were I they mean, trying to like? Were they trying to like emphasize the bolt, the bulge, the way that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, Clearly. I mean, weren't were is it isn't isn't like even though again failed miserably, isn't that what they were trying to do for like men? And so, what's fantastic and, about this particular butts? shot and what I love about it is that this is literally just the juxtaposition so like on the one hand we have Riker who looks ridiculous and there's really no way to move around that and it's so bad that that Robin's gonna take like you know Todd's gonna take from the, a swig from the can um <laughs> it's juxtaposed tough. juxtaposed with Deanna Troy who is similarly sexualized and yet we are expected as viewers to look at that and say that's completely normal that's fine yeah wait wasn't there a tos episode of a similar society probably i'm gonna need you to flesh that out william i could have sworn that i remembered either that or something else i knew it was star trek where it was a society ruled by women and the men were like shirtless like the whole time or was that another tng episode I was gonna say, didn't TNG episode recycle a lot of TOS? I mean, most of first, like, let's be real, show. most of first yes. season did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did recycle like T like old TOS plots, and I'm trying to think yeah. of like shirtless men and T and TOS, and I'm not coming up with anything. I mean, we know what happened to the Orions later on. <laughs> I mean, while we're here. So the Orions, are, <laughs> the Orions are a very different situation because the Orions are a not a gender specific society, right? Um, and the power structure with respect to Orions is a not fully fleshed out, and b seems to be a little more complicated than it is in Angel One. I think part of the problem, part of one of the really big problems with Angel One is that we don't get a sense of who the culture is like what they're about other than space karens and actually we, we, that, we, yeah no i was gonna say that actually brings up a good question if instead of the writers in the script creating a whole new species a whole new planet what if we did use a species like the orions 
right? And use that to explore their culture a little bit more, right? Because as you said, their power structure, their gender structure in their society, oh, Jermaine. There's a lot to love right. about that show. Calm down, There's a lot, calm, a lot calm down, Robin, love. calm down, calm down. But mm. I, gotta anyway. love, I love the back one. I love the back right. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, um, what what I do I actually really find that episode of Enterprise really fascinating because it explores concepts of power and it plays with Archer's assumption about who has power and how power um, is manipulated um, and in in fact like the Orion women actually manipulate or actually take advantage of Archer's assumptions. And go from there, which is which is insane, considering that Enterprise is such a Berman property, right? Um, <laughs> they snuck something. Past, they 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 were able to sneak some good stuff past him, like somehow. I have no idea how, but like I'm grateful because that I mean, I really find that to be you know fantastic. So, and, so the and we got oh. and we have like great, like give me a second to go, let me let me go to the cloud minders for a second, and then we can mm. we can come back. But we have really great all other franchise installments that play with these concepts of power and how power gets shared and how we deal with it. Um, so, so, so much better than Angel One does. Mm-hmm. Like even in, I mean, even in TOS in the '60s, we have the Cloudminders, which features uh, Droxine and the leader and the female leader of um, the mining cast. Sorry, that's gotta be Robin because, like, I, I, where I live, planes aren't a thing. Um, uh, that's probably Air Force thing. One. <laughs> that's probably Air Force One. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm genuinely serious. I don't live that far from Andrews Air Force Base. Anyway. No, maybe, no, no, I have an idea. Maybe, yeah, but... maybe it's Picard and Seven going back to the future. We can only hope. We, we, we can only hope because that would be a better solution than we got going now. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Yes. Okay. okay. So. Oh my so God, they go back seen. and they meet Guinan in the 21st century on Earth. That's how they see her again. Cause she's oh no, we already that suffered point. through that in Time's Arrows part, part one and two. And no, no, we are not going back to that. I love okay, Time's Arrows. Okay, anyway. Oh God, I love I'm you, but no. um, So back. anyway, so so go back go back to the picture of the Cloud Miters mm-hmm. for a second. So the person standing beside, beside Spock is Droxine. And let's be real we know what she's bringing to the or we know what the episode assumes she's bringing to the table okay it just by that whole phenomenon but it turns out at the episode at the conclusion of the episode that she and the leader of the oppressed minority actually come to an understanding and then proceed to go and remake society Hmm. this is the 60s y'all this is the 60s and i gotta say tos not really a forward-thinking feminist show Mm -hmm. so what i don't understand is where we go so wrong with angel one like we have in the franchise history we have in the franchise dna that we can remake society and do it the right way. But Angel One ends with Mistress Beata, and we're gonna have a whole conversation about the the use of the term mistress. Yeah, yeah, like, let me tell you, can can you spot the Space Karen? Because I can spot the Space Karen in this picture. It's pretty That is the 80s version of the, I need to speak to your manager. And no, I will not be accepting a exchange. I want the store. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I want the store. Right. I mean, it's space, it, but it's weirdly, it's like space Karen in pseudo Japanese inspired outfits. So there's just there's there's so much, so much going on here. Um, but yeah, she basically is sent. I mean, after Commander Riker convinces her with his magic penis um, to see things his way, uh, right there with the world's tiniest booze. 
Um, and I gotta tell you, like, if I were going, I, I'm gonna need more booze for that scene. <laughs> Look, the minute the nip comes out, you, 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 I have to go. I'm sorry, but I need a bigger one. I need a. They bigger didn't even finish cup. it. They didn't even finish it. Maybe it's potent. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, basically Riker comes in and says, hey, I need you to rethink the entire legal perspective of your culture um, because my penis is magic. And Mistress Beata goes, I, let's go do that. Bet, yeah. And again, that's why maybe this episode, what would make this episode stronger is if they use a more established theory, um, a more established alien civilization, sure. right? So if we yeah. explore the Orions or if we, or if we even just simply went back to this to Angel One more often in the series, so we can see how that you know development takes place, it would just I don't know. It would make sense, think, but like yeah. in, this, in this particular set, in this particular case, like again, if you're trying to make a point about equal rights and about mm -hmm. taking power back, because Angel One is very much about power. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna take that back. You needed not. You needed for that to not have been Riker. That would have been I mean, another strong choice. I mean, we have oh, oh, Mistress oh. Ariel, who's I think an underused character. Mm -hmm. So we have Mister Mistress Ariel, who's the one who ends up married to Ramsey, who is you know Space MacGyver, um, <laughs> and she is a member of the society. And not only is she a member of the society, we've seen her previously cast as being pretty hardcore, like party line, as far as Angel One's moral, natural order is concerned. And then we find out that she's married to Ramsey, of all because people. And Ramsey, be, of course, being one of the survivors from the Odin and being one of the men who's trying to who's trying to fight against this matriarchal order due to his due to the concept of this just the level of injustice is being um visited upon men like trent and Riker. trent of course being you know the the short Riker um in in the pastel blue that's so, really all you get so and also can we have a can we have a moment like if you have if you have yeah that guy that's trent <laughs> um who apparently has gone on to have a, a pretty solid career and i don't want to take that away from him but like also if you have an alien race like why the heck would his name be trent i was wondering <laughs> like who like you you could you could have called him anything other than literally trent. anything like you could have made something <laughs> up and that's not what we get. In fact, we, like we we apparently are just shopping from the Little Mermaid for names in this episode. Like they could have they could have they could have called him Tot, and it would have been Trent. But hey. yeah, like I mean, I'm just like okay, Tot. okay. Um, you know, writing is hard, and sometimes when you're writing, it's very hard to come up with names. So we we use the names that. <laughs> familiar with it. I really they, love they the use design. the names of I, some I really that they were doing earlier. I really appreciate it, Robin. And I, and I don't want to rat. Yeah. Okay. This was <laughs> Ariel, by the way, is the one in, like, eggplant behind him. But she, And like I said, she's the one who ends up married to Ramsey, who is effectively mm. Space MacGyver with that mullet. Um, but not as interesting. Don't act like y'all won't pull on that. Yeah, no, I would not have. I like, how he's his wine. I like how he's just sipping his wine like, y'all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, Jermaine. Bon Jovi. Oh, no, Come on, no. Bon Jovi. Tell me. You, you're, no, you're, like, that is the Bon Jovi you know, from Wish. The Bon Jovi from Wish? Oh, he's typing right now. He is typing. <laughs> he is typing. I was he, he, trying like, not to drink this episode. I was trying so hard. <laughs> he is like that chick with the long nails when you know you're about to say some shit that's going to piss somebody off. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I mean, she's so she's she is invested in and is, in fact, part of the power structure in Angel One. And she 
leaves it because she's i mean i guess ramsey's magic penis convinced her that's otherwise. what i was going to say all it takes is some human federation dick and apparently it changes your belief system all the way around but i would have loved but i would have loved to have had mistress ariel have the con the opportunity to talk about why she makes the decision she does and hopefully it would be something other than like he's a good nine inches um yeah. And to Jermaine's question in the chat, it's not so much about replacing Riker with another character, right? It's like you, like Marie said, it's about giving Marie that space to <clears throat> to explore her own thoughts and explore her thinking. It's giving that weight to the change, you know, to her to her change in thought that would turn the episode around and make and turn it away from it not being about. Ramsey or Riker or whatever white guy's magic dick. And, and that's it, right? Like, because ultimately yeah. the episode is, is centers around Ramsey and Riker. It doesn't act, I mean, versus Beata. Um, but even then, like, Beata is, is such a caricature. She's not really a character at all. And this is not the actress's fault by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, they, they, the they each played their roles the way. Like I think she got as much out of Beata as you could possibly get. So mad props to her, because <laughs> like I can imagine like sitting down and being like, "I'm getting paid for this, and that's what I'm going to focus on." Because back then it was either that or you were going to be broke and homeless. Honey has some rent to pay, and you know what? By golly, she paid it. <laughs> um, so no one, no one is throwing again, shade at like the Matt, actor. I mean, man, props to her. Yeah. Like she, I mean, she mm -hmm. she sells it. She goes for it. She she works with what she's got. So more power to her. I think um, for me, like that's the hard part about these early TNG episodes that are so terrible. It's because a lot of times, even if the episode is, and this one, I can go into like the um the cast reactions because patrick stewart in particular does not like this episode and i think patrick stewart has um, a lot a lot to say about yeah. it and again yeah. also mad props to patrick stewart because patrick stewart has such a, a problematic relationship with toxic masculinity which is ultimately what win what wins this episode mm. um um, but yeah, but part of the reason why I have so much trouble piecing my thoughts on these early episodes of TNG is because the actors kind of tend to have a good good time, right? Like, I don't like the other character. I don't like the storyline they take her through, but she's giving it her all. She's trying her best, and she's taking what she can and doing what she can with the character and making of it what she will. Bad representation or not, but... I mean, and we can talk about um, the two writers of this episode don't strong woman because that's another um, that's another aspect, right? Because being a strong woman is not being literally big, tall, and strong. It's and not man. It's not being a man with boobs, right? Yeah, and that's and that's another part of the problem with Angel One is that. Angel One envisions this matriarchal society through such a profoundly cishet male lens. Mm -hmm. So I have a question then. Which one is worse for this episode? The skewed feminism fem feminism in this or the toxic masculinity in the end? I would actually argue that there's not really a skewed feminism here. Mm -hmm. I would actually argue that all of this is toxic masculinity because Beata is actually like is cast as being a man with boobs. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's acting according to what toxic masculinity would tell her to do. Um, if we've got, I mean, weirdly, I think Ramsey is not um as toxic, interestingly enough. That's a well, okay, welcome me at this. So Ramsey sets him it, like Ramsey sets himself up to be first off, he's the only one that they interact with initially, right? Like he's he has he's doing everything he can to protect everyone else. He doesn't implicate his wife. I mean, basically he sits down and says, look, this was the problem. This is what we're doing to, to address it. Like, I've been here for seven years. Like, this is my home. Um, 
and he doesn't ever really like he doesn't really flex power ever he just he got a family did, did, did right. they, I mean, basically, they, he's like, I've got, yeah. I mean, all of these people have families, like, I'm responsible. Some of them have multiple them. wives. Some of them have multiple wives. I don't remember that part. I don't remember polygamy being an issue. But, you know, I'll take your word for it. Wait, hang on. Um, I can pull up my memory alpha here. Um, or, but, I, but I really, but, but I really, like, like what he's doing. And... And eventually he decides that what he's, and he decides that he's going to become, like, I mean, he's willing to accept the consequences for his actions, even if that means dying, like, right here. Also, can we talk about these terrible sandals? Like, why? Sandals? Hey, look at the mandals he's rocking. And at some point, Ed, seriously, like at some point, I'm going to stop talking about the, the costume design in this episode, but it's just so terrible. I want to know who the costume designer is. And I mean, can we also have a conversation about like how how weird person standing on the other side of Mistress Ariel is is like a, a Japanese Gestapo? Gestapo. I mean. Oh, man. They it's... just came to set that day and put on the moment. I mean, I'm not saying that the actor's the problem. I'm not saying the actor's the problem. I'm saying the fact that like, um, the entire costume design is just insane. I'm looking up the costume designer. Because I, I, I don't I don't understand this. Like I fundamentally don't understand this. I guess maybe the concept is is that in the eighties we all had to be hyper masculine in order to have power and so that's why we have like shoulder pads on steroids mm -hmm. but then they also but then there's such a japanese flavor mm -hmm. to so much of this um with the way like with the mm -hmm. with the way that the outfits are designed like they literally in, are on zabutan for the audience I mean, everybody's like in, on their knees in a very traditional kind of mm. Japanese posture. Like what? <laughs> right here. Oh man, that is I'm, not a Western I... assumption, guys. Like, I mean, that is like Westerners have chairs and and don't do that. Yo, William Ware. This dude has the same initials as me. William Ware who was the costume creator and executive consultant for all of season one of The Next Generation. He was also the costume designer in the original series. This is my shocked face. Another, an another one. Uh, yeah. So and that I'm out of wine. That explains the company. I'm out of wine or I would legit like I would, I would probably have taken this, but not shot. It's just it's like I mean, it just. So I want to share this this quote with you guys because I, I, I find it interesting. I'm, I'm on the Memory Alpha page for this episode, um, and so early in production of this episode, um, Gene Roddenberry, Rick Barry, who wrote the episode, and Herbert Ray um, were aware you know, as they were writing this, that this, this concept was um, decent overdone. Um, so we have Wright saying, one of the issues that we didn't want to do was an Amazon woman kind of thing, where the women are six feet tall with D cups. Um, Wonder Woman. He said the hit I'm gonna take on, literally he said Wonder Woman. Um, so the hit I want to take is on a, is apartheid so that the men are treated as though they are blacks in South Africa. Make it political, sexual overtones, yes, but political. That didn't last long. Um, the only black dude changed, I saw in. I mean, Jordy, Jordy gets a moment to have, I mean, Jordy, Jordy gets a five minutes on the bridge, like, you know, in charge and then proceeds to get the sniffles. Oh, by the way, I, I did kind of see, like, for for the first time, I kind of, like, saw him as, like, a gay character in that moment. Because that, that mm. suit was a little too tight. 
<laughs> oh, so fun fact. Um, you know how in season two they go to kind of like that that coat thing, and it's because the level of sp because everybody had to wear uh, a costume that was you know one or two sizes too small in order to avoid the wrinkle phenomenon. Marina Sirtis went at one point said apparently the twenty fourth century is fucking wrinkle free, um, which is hilarious. Because she was talking about having to wear various forms mm. of girdles and corsets and how terrible it was. Um, but, like, Patrick Stewart actually developed um, back oh, yeah, problems because of the original, because of that sort of spandex. Um, and he got a note from his doctor and was like, I can't do this. So they had to change it. Mm hmm. Yeah, it, it kind of became an OSHA thing. And what's interesting, though, is that... Yeah, right there. And note, Jordy's in red! This is still season one. Jordy doesn't become se like chief and engineer until season two. I ain't gonna lie. He's at his hottest at that point. <laughs> um... I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, part of me, part of me also likes Jordy's beard um, that LeVar Burton actually adopted for his wedding. Oh, you're talking about you're talking about um in Nemesis his beard. No, I'm talking about like even earlier than that in Aquiel. You're talking about when they were all rocking that beard at the poker table. Nutdog, Aquiel. I haven't seen it. It's it, it's it's it. <laughs> um, yeah, she was pretty cool, but Aquiel is the Aquiel is the episode where like the dog eats people. And also, let's have a conversation about the fact that it's a big, giant, white dog. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, TNG was crazy. Oh, no, oh. oh, no, no. Like, okay. TNG was crazy, crazy, but, like, any time okay. Jordy's love life became involved, it just okay. went off the deep end. Because, like, <gasps> it was oh, either, I like, I was was either just... romancing, like, a creepy hologram, lifelike hologram of somebody yeah. else. Or he was watching um, this nice lady's entire, like, private diaries and decided that he fell in love with her from Jordan. there. Yeah, I want to do the, the, an, an episode of FTP on the hologram, on the two episodes with the doctor. Honest to God, like, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's an FTP episode or if that's a Black Trek episode because I think there, there's a fair amount of overlap because I suspect that a lot of it had to do with the fact that they just didn't know what to do with Black sexuality there. We can make it a two-parter. It's both because. Yeah. It's such a mess. I mean, there's so much there's to talk about. They, like, and now there's are so many memes of it where it, they're treating Jordy like he just could not erase his porn history. I mean, it's, I mean, it's that's hanging, kind right? of the it point of the episode, it. right? Erase your damn porn history. I mean, but it wasn't like that, though. He, I mean, if that was the case, we could say the same thing about Harry Kim. He can't stay his ass off the holodeck either, and neither could Riker. Harry so, Kim. like... I'm not arguing. I am not Look, arguing. But like, what Riker happens when really successfully the gets laid? Riker That's gets successfully laid. Gay, gay Harry character. Kim and and Harry Kim is. I mean, Harry Kim's lack of game is also a conversation because apparently, you know, like, um, men of color just can't unless you're Chakotay. Can't apparently. get laid. Yeah. Well, to be fair, Chakotay is kind of hot. Anyway. And Chakotay is Chakotay, but I, but I, but I will, I will posit to you that he is the exception that proves the rule. I, I did like looking at his butt in that one shot, like that we could only see his butt when he took his clothes off for the indigenous. People. Anyway, like he had a nice ass. Like I know we're all way off topic, but can we just admit <laughs> that Robert Beltram at that can point not go on about? He had a nice booty. So much <laughs> for five. It was just a booty. Like, it was such a nice play. I, I designate myself as the booty hey, look, of the show. <laughs> hey, look, we get to Voyager and we start talking about Seven of Nine. I'm going to go on about how that cat suit was the best costuming decision in the entire world. Like, even so though, like, even though, it, mean, even though it was the most sexist and misogynistic thing on Voyager. <laughs> 
But so on the one on the one Absolutely. hand, like I'm kind of on the on the one hand, I'm kind of on I'm it hurts because on the one hand, I want to be like, yes, that's a terrible costuming decision because that is not great. But on the other, I'm like, but I appreciate so much about that. <laughs> I mean, to me, Look, I've, I've knew said it for years. Some costume design, some little gay woman knew what they were doing with that costume design. You're not, You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Because it's like, I'm sitting here. Oh, it, it is okay. Who took the picture mm -hmm. of Jeff Goldblum and put Robert's <laughs> face on it? Like... <laughs> Also, I need to know why you had that in your image file. That was not me. I know it's not you. I'm talking to Jermaine. <laughs> yeah, Jermaine's a freak. I don't know when he gonna admit that. Or not, not <laughs> Google search. You my need. You spirit. need to racial history, Jermaine. <laughs> Jermaine. Jermaine. <laughs> And he's fast. We know. Ladies and gentlemen, we are finding out more about Jermaine than we necessarily expected oh to this e this God. show. This is like FTP is just like TMI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. This I is know. The, right. The, like this is where FTP overlaps with Black Track, which overlaps with LGB Track. Like, I mean, we're oh. all we're all like, yeah. But 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 back to the point I was originally making. I've always wanted, and I'm sure there's plenty of them in Las Vegas, like Ch like Chippendale. But like I want to go, like like there's like there's Hooters everywhere. I don't like going to Hooters, right? But if there were, and the roles were reversed, and there were men, and it wasn't, uh, and it wasn't a gay club where dudes wouldn't stop keeping their hands off you, I would go to that bitch and I would eat there. <laughs> So I can't really get mad at the costuming that they did for the men in Angel One. Cause to me, I'd be like, what's up? So my frustration, okay. So my frustration with the, co with the costuming in Angel One is that it's a terrible. Um, it's just bad like, choices. Right. I mean, it's, it, it doesn't, it, it really doesn't make sense. Um, but I also, like, I mean, it just, but in terms of, like, some sort of consistency, I'm just so confused. Like, I mean, we go from, again, this sort of, like, militaristic pseudo-Japanese, like, whatever's I'm going on. Things just don't make because sense. they're, like, they're they're literally wearing sleeveless Hakama. Sometimes things just don't make sense. Now, I, I don't know much about the, the women's attire at the thing. I just, all I know is that, that harness they were wearing was lifting their butt cheeks so high and apparently they most of them were dancers and a good turn it, of them, yeah. yeah 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 and uh, it, it lifted their butt cheeks like this <laughs> and that and, and i guess that's kind of the point right because like the the men are supposed to be hyper sexualized and it's the whole like weird Ooh. nipple thing just again really so so again like my issue with angel one is that it had it, it's it's filmed from such a profoundly cis hat male lens and from everything from the societal structure and how things would be run to also the concepts of what would and would not be attractive to women like it's true. so it's okay true. okay um and i, no, and, and, I say, and i say this because like we're looking behind we're looking behind robin and we're looking at various types of, of like anime so if you if you contrast shonen anime which is is for men like okay. you have like shirtless men that are hyper masculinized they're incredibly right. muscular they're just like big dudes and then you look at the shoujo like the wit like um, anime that's targeted at women and it's a very different physique it's you know they're mm -hmm. they're smaller they're um i mean sure they're still taller but like they're not they're not nearly as imposing um like if you look at so old sailor moon because i'm ancient and therefore this is what i'm going to reach for but like sailor moon if you look at tuxedo mask tuxedo mask doesn't look like Hulk Hogan, right, right. So and that's in part of the so reason. The, mm, yeah. Is it like so? The problem with the Angel One costumes is they're highlighting aspects of the men. Yeah, like this, right? Again, mm -hmm. 
they're highlighting aspects of the men that men think women find attractive and that's not how that works that's a good point that's a good point yeah but they did highlight what i like so because again they're looking at this I'm gay. lens that's true that is very true that is very true that's actually a very good point i wonder is 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 william the costume designer like low-key like I'm not speculating. And again, I was talking over Robin a minute ago. So like, what were you going with? No, I was just going to say, it, it was just a point about your anime. I was going to say the most popular anime among young women that are shown in are also written by women, right? So, um, yes, um, I believe yes. like one and of that's the- a totally yeah. different kettle of fish. And, and you yeah. can very much tell like even in, even in drama land, right? Like with C dramas and K dramas, like the C dramas and K dramas that are most successful are the ones that are written and directed by women. And they have a very um, well, different, very different approach than say, like if you can, if you compare those with um, movies specifically that are very much targeted at a male audience they are written and directed and produced for men so like if you look at the difference in lens with how these things are like structured and envisioned it's kind of shocking so because my because example really was have in the west like or in the us i mean we don't really have the same sort of dichotomy because like men kind of do dominate across the board well, it's the difference between, I think, the best American example would be the uh, Teen Titans cartoon, um, which, which is... One? Which one? Which, which one? The first the cartoon. one. Not, Thank you. Not Young Okay, Master. not the crash one. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. Mm -hmm. right, which, that other one didn't happen. happen. Like, what are you talking about? That other one didn't happen. Like, what? what? Yeah, not okay, go. cool. Yeah. Not go. The original Teen Titans, right, was very popular with young women right and little girls and that's was the good. reason why mm -hmm. and that's part of the reason why it was canceled because you know cartoon network at the time wanted to sell toys for teen titans to little boys that was what they were marketing to they didn't want to sell they didn't want to sell it to little girls but the difference between that show and in the comics is a complete lack of sexualization in the characters right so you have lean bodies lean to kids who actually look like teenagers rather than someone like Starfire, who in the comics looks like, and again, beautiful goddess Starfire in the comics, she looks completely different in this show. And that's part of the reason why, and for me at least, being a little girl, that's part of the reason why I loved it, because I could see someone being badass and being sexualized. Like, that's the reason why I like, why Dick Grayson Robin, my favorite Robin, because he is, and was sexualized in a way that spoke to me as a young girl, right? That I liked as a young girl. That I re and we don't open up a lot of different other cans. I realize. <laughs> I, I mean, really, just at this point, like we're we're backing away now. I, I mean, we're at minute fifty nine. I side note: I realized I was gay when I saw Chris O'Donnell in that Robin suit. Can we just in Batman and Robin? Like, see, J Jermaine, you know you're there with me because the director did that on purpose. And boy, he was fine. We're not going to talk about I think we just learned more women. about William Please. than we needed necessarily to know. I mean, I get we all I, had crushes on awkward people when we were kids, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, we are, we are now <laughs> at the hour mark. And um while we didn't so much get a lot of angel one discussion in we sure had a lot of fun I, and we, we got, hope you we did got, too we, we got the point and and i'll say and i'll say this before we close the biggest problem that i personally had now that i have a better understanding of the show is that i don't like any platform any people for any reason whatsoever where one group speaks for another that mm -hmm. has no experience no knowledge no consent no permission it's completely wrong. The costuming, the writing, and the design of it all was done by cis white straight men. Yeah. And that's not Except that cool. weird sort of mushroom lamp. Part of me kind of wants the random mushroom lamp. I'm not gonna lie. 
So again, that was the quote. So with the quote I was trying to read earlier, um, <laughs> that's kind of the point. I keep going back to this quote. I know, I know. We have yeah, yeah, yeah. finish you your point, out. finish your point. So the whole point of this was, the, so Gene Roddenberry had his hand in the cookie jar in this entire episode, right? So- <clears throat> And now uh, I have a really <laughs> terrible image in my head. So thanks for that. <sighs> Dang. <laughs> Dang. I was the innocent kid on this show. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I got the Reese's on that one. Made me open up my candy. <laughs> Made me drink my water. It's fine. Well, don't mean anything. <laughs> Guys, we're like, right, let, look, right, you gotta wrap this up in like five minutes, Robin. Go. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just saying, Gene had his hand as a cookie jar. He saw it as more of a political episode than a sex than an episode with sexual overtones. I like how Marie and I just both did hand gestures, like. So what we get is a confused episode that means nothing, makes and does not make the point it is trying to make. <laughs> I mean, you saw, I mean, guys, like, we love each other, you know, we were a family, and it's like, this. Sh sometimes the show can be so horrible that it's, like, really funny. Like, like, what? Are you serious? Like, it's, it's like, did that really just happen? I'll admit, there's a lot of things that I didn't get at first, you know? And there's a lot of things that, um, oh, okay, biggest lesson of all, it is okay to sit back and listen to another point of view that you do not, that you admittedly do not understand. It is okay. That, yeah. You will find that you will find more acceptance and far less judgment if you just sit back and say, hey, because I am this and not this, I don't feel like it is right for me to speak on this. Therefore, I ask that you explain it to me, you know, and it's, and it's like- and Also, I, know, I think that like, makes you a better person, truly. Right. Yeah. Like, and, you know, more aware of right. of where you are and how you navigate the world. Right. And that was essentially the whole point we were trying to make, like, while we were laughing our way through for the last hour. <laughs> but you get it. I, girlfriend, you're going to need to start sharing those. I do like these Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Reese's is my, my favorite. This is my absolute <laughs> favorite. This, is my, this also, was literally my birthday happy, present for my boss. Happy belated birthday, by the way, Robin. Happy belated birthday. It's not belated. Three more minutes. Oh, well. Oh. I think, yeah. Wait, three more minutes for real? Mm -hmm. It's almost midnight here. That's right. We're, right. we're mad. Yeah, so that that's what sort I of mean. Since Robin has to go be a person tomorrow, we should probably sign off. So um, everybody, we certainly thank you for coming along this ride with us and mm. we will see you hopefully soon. I think the next episode we're going to cover is the quickening and we're going to talk about um, mm. anti-vaxxers and vaccine controversies. Now that is a big one. That's going to be a great episode. That's so I awesome. hope to see you soon and yeah. They delighted in trick. Live long and prosper, guys. So we got through that. I have no idea if we actually covered anything of, of useful of use. Whoops. All right. All right. All right, camera. We're I don't know. We sort of talk about Angel. Happy birthday oh. to you. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> wow, well, can Come on. Yeah, you really got it. Go. But we sort of, but we did. We got, we got into a lot of like, we got into a lot of good shit. We got into power. Like Jermaine brought us to the Orions. So well done, you. Yeah.
You found I mean, the I saw, I saw you snapping at me. Well, I saw you snapping. Me? I'm just saying, we did good. We did good. Wait, yeah, so are you still recording? we are still recording. Oh, now. It says in recording. Oh, Bloops. shit. Bloops. Yeah.